while reusability seems challenging for most space companies, it's become a habit for SpaceX as we frequently see them reusing the first stage of their rockets. But there's more to their achievements, and they are engaging in groundbreaking tasks that we barely hear about. Recently, they achieved something that will change the future of their Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. However, another equally important aspect often gets overlooked, the fairing. So, let's find out in today's episode of AB Space, how has SpaceX improved its ability to reuse fairings on its rockets? This has truly shocked Bo Boeing and even NASA. These two recent clusters of major milestones, SpaceX's family of Falcon 9 and heavy rockets is rapidly the way along the path to ambitious goals for booster and fairing reusability. Some people say SpaceX's success and popularity is because of their smart marketing, but while the marketing certainly helps, it's mostly their groundbreaking ideas and how quickly they've made those ideas a reality that have really put them in the spotlight. One of these ideas is reusable rockets. The idea of launching a rocket into space and then bringing it back to Earth safely seemed like something out of a movie. SpaceX has made it happen, and now they are one of the few companies that have reusable rockets. SpaceX's journey toward rocket reusability began not very long. In September 2011, the company announced its plan to develop a system that could land and reuse the first stages of its Falcon 9 rockets. The first major breakthrough came on December 21, 2015, when SpaceX successfully landed a Falcon 9 first stage on a landing pad at Cape Canaveral. This event marked the first time an orbital rocket stage had been recovered after completing its mission in space. The next milestone was achieved on March 30, 2017. This was the first time SpaceX reused a Falcon 9 first stage for an orbital mission. The stage had previously flown in April 2016 and its successful reflight and landing. This success paved the way for the development of the Falcon Heavy. The Falcon Heavy uses three Falcon 9 engine cores or boosters. This design allows it to lift much heavier payloads into space. Compared to the Falcon 9, the first successful launch of Falcon Heavy took place on February 6, 2018, famously sending Musk's Tesla Roadster into space as a test payload. While SpaceX has been successful in reusing the boosters of their rockets, which are the main engine components they were initially unable to reuse other parts like the payload fairings. These fairings are the shell-like structures that protect the payload during the rocket's ascent through the atmosphere. And they cost about $6 million, which is approximately 10% of the total launch cost. This means each launch still involved these multi-million dollar fairings being used only once. To address this, SpaceX developed a method to recover and reuse these fairings. Their initial attempts to reuse these expensive components was not easy. The fairings must endure extreme conditions during launch, such as high speeds and temperatures and mechanical stresses. After fulfilling their protective role, the fairings descend back to Earth, where SpaceX planned to catch the mid-air. With the latest launch on May 8, the Falcon rocket family has surpassed the total number of space shuttle missions from NASA's historic Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center. The combination of Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches marks 83 missions to orbit from SpaceX's KSC pad compared to the total of 82 shuttle launches over the program's 30-year history. Regarding reusability, the recent Falcon 9 launch achieved the 305th landing of a first stage in SpaceX's inception. The company has refurbished a total of 42 recovered boosters, which have subsequently flown at least twice, with one booster setting record of 20 missions and landings. All of these milestones are towering beacons that competitors in the industry must always gaze up at, even taking them as targets to strive for on their career paths. However, it's essential to understand that SpaceX never rests on its plurals. They continuously research and innovate to push their work forward as much as possible. To achieve this, SpaceX used two specially equipped ships. Named Ms. Tree and Ms. Chief. These ships were outfitted with large nets intended to catch the fairings as they descended under parachutes. This method, while innovative, did not achieve high success rates initially. The catch success was less than 20% of the attempts. Recognizing the limitations of mid-air recovery, SpaceX shifted its approach to retrieving the fairings from the ocean. This change in strategy has allowed for more consistent recovery and reuse of the fairings. Musk has reported that they have managed to reuse fairings over 300 times, 
each set saving about $6 million. The shift to ocean recovery also made the refurbishment process easier. Recovered fairings are brought back and refurbished for future flights. This includes checks for structural integrity, electronic functionality, and other critical components. That is as simple as reusing a Falcon rocket. They were never satisfied with just reusing the first stage of the rocket, but wanted to reuse the entire rocket. Back in the early 2010s, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk's original dream was to make Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy 100% reusable, meaning that the company would need to find ways to reliably recover booster first stages, payload fairings, and the rocket's upper second stages. The concept of Falcon 9's second stage reuse survived into 2018 before Musk ultimately conceded defeat accepting that Falcon 9 and Heavy simply didn't offer the performance necessary to make full reusability a worthwhile investment. The concept, however, still lives on in SpaceX's next-generation Starship launch vehicle. This does mean Falcon rockets will never be fully reusable, but it's still up to SpaceX to decide how far they'll push the envelope with rockets' existing reusable hardware. Finally, SpaceX has considered leveraging the most valuable part of the Falcon's rocket's second stage, the fairing. When SpaceX began exploring ways to reuse the fairing of the Falcon rocket line, it marked a significant leap forward in their reusability efforts to date. This was clearly demonstrated through statements made by Elon Musk during a company-wide presentation in January. He confidently stated, So at an immense amount of effort, we now quite regularly recover the fairing, and we've reflown fairing 300 times. That sounds like the stuff of dreams, doesn't it? But that's precisely the truth that SpaceX has achieved, and it's undoubtedly a tremendous source of pride. Because this has brought both significant impacts not only to the entire company, but also the entire space industry. Firstly, it shines as a bright star in the launch market, cost savings, a truly galactic game-changer. In fact, the fairing recovery is a significant issue as it helps reduce rocket costs by 80%. After each landing, it's brought back to SpaceX and refurbished at minimal levels. Fairings may seem mundane, but there were $6 million a set, equivalent to 10% of the launch costs, so they are very much worth recovering. Now, $6 million might seem like a drop in the vast exploration ocean when considering the total launch costs of Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, or other high-priced rockets. And this figure becomes even more enormous when we do a simple calculation with over 300 reuses. The result is an exorbitant figure of $1.8 billion, one that not only underscores the colossal impact of fairing recovery on SpaceX's financial landscape, but also highlights the transformative power of cost efficiency in the space industry. While it may seem easy, no space company, not even large organizations like NASA, have fully achieved this. NASA, for example, faced significant technical and financial challenges with the Space Shuttle, which never achieved full reusability of all its parts. The technical challenges include the high stress and wear on rocket components, such as turbo pumps, thrust chambers, and nozzles. These components can suffer from various degradation issues like cracking or even more severe failures that could lead to catastrophic outcomes, such as metal fires in oxygen-rich environments. Instead of focusing solely on making Falcon rockets fully reusable, SpaceX has shifted its resources towards developing the Starship which is designed to be fully reusable and can handle a wider variety of missions, including interplanetary travel. Starship is much larger than the Falcon rockets, with a name to lift over 100 metric tons to Earth orbit, significantly more than the capacities of existing rockets like the Falcon Heavy, which can lift about 22.2 metric tons. Interestingly, some experts are predicting that SpaceX might soon retire the Falcon Heavy. Initially, Falcon Heavy was the most powerful operational rocket. Until the introduction of NASA's Space Launch System. The Falcon Heavy uses three Falcon 9 boosters to increase its power and has successfully completed nine launches. However, despite its impressive capabilities, the launch frequency of Falcon Heavy has been unexpectedly decreasing. This decrease can be partly attributed to its unique position in SpaceX's rocket lineup. The Falcon Heavy isn't as powerful as the upcoming Starship, yet it's larger and more complex than the Falcon 9. This middle ground positioning has made it less suitable for the range of missions that SpaceX is increasingly targeting. In addition to cost savings, recovering and reuse fairings also increase SpaceX's flight rate. Of course, 
this also includes reusing the first stage boosters of the Falcon rockets. SpaceX's reverse-engineered financial models showed that to achieve robust positive cash flow, they need more than the traditional 10 to 12 launches per year that large rockets have demonstrated. With reusability, 20 to 25 flights per Falcon, with up to 90% of the cost being reusable, would put SpaceX in a much stronger cash flow position. Reusability is a fantastic brand image tool, but more importantly, it allows SpaceX to double its flight rate and earn more money while getting ready for the journey to Mars using reusable technology. This can't be compared to flying rockets because the Falcon rocket family dominates the rocket reusability niche. They aim for reusability by returning to orbit and landing, as well as recovering solid rocket boosters. Unfortunately, maintenance and damage were much higher than expected on each flight, taking months to refurbish each aircraft, leading to much higher costs per flight and less frequent schedules than the program used to justify. Other insulation needs and external storage bins make the entire aircraft heavier during takeoff, limiting payload capacity. In addition, a rocket in the same family as the space shuttle used once led to massive cost per launch, NASA's Space Launch System, SLS. Each SLS launch costs from $2 to $4 billion, a figure that makes taxpayers dizzy. Therefore, SpaceX's unique reuse strategy has challenged these traditional standards, continuing to be a model change, especially in transitioning to a private model in the aerospace industry. The impact of SpaceX's reuse strategy goes beyond the company's own activities. While the Falcon 9 is suitable for a wide array of satellite launches, especially involving smaller satellites, the Starship is being developed as a more powerful and fully reusable rocket designed to handle larger payloads and more ambitious missions, such as deep space exploration. So, the Falcon Heavy is not as well suited as the Falcon 9 4. Smaller payload missions, nor does it match the anticipated power and versatility of the Starship for larger, more complex missions. Additionally, the shift in the market for satellite launches has played a significant role in the reduced activity of the Falcon Heavy, the evolving needs of the satellite industry and the enhanced capabilities of SpaceX's other rockets, particularly the upgraded Falcon 9, have influenced the demand for Falcon Heavy. The improved Falcon 9 has become suitable for missions that might have previously required the Falcon Heavy, leading to a decrease in its use. This shift highlights the dynamic nature of the commercial launch market and the need for adaptable and versatile launch options like the Starship. When other organizations, both private and government, witness the effectiveness of this method, it becomes an inspiring beacon of hope. China mimicking SpaceX's strategy may even be called copying, emphasizing the global impact of this pioneering phenomenon. In SpaceX's story, rocket launch prices decrease, becoming a competitive advantage, along with the outstanding reputation that SpaceX has painstakingly built. In the ever-evolving space race, SpaceX's dominance is maintained through innovation, cost efficiency, and a vision for reaching for the stars. But truth be told, while the story sounds grand and impressive, it's also required a considerable amount of time and effort from SpaceX. Elon Musk himself acknowledged the formidable nature of this endeavor, stating, this was actually very difficult to recover the fairing. Unlike the booster, which completes its role in the first few minutes of launch, reaching an altitude of 80 kilometers, the fairing has a longer journey, remaining operational until at least the payload deployment stage. Facilitating safe passage through the atmosphere, followed by the complex process of navigation, capture, recovery, and reuse, all present major challenges. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.